You're listening to the Veteran Etc. Podcast, as there's always more to be said about a veteran. Join your host, Mike Kim, a veteran, ex-monk, season war trauma therapist, and writer, as he shares his years of research in veteran readjustment culture and the meaning of warrior life. Now, here's your host, Mike Kim. This is Mike Kim for Veteran Etc. And uh, it's just awesome to have my man, the, the King of Kings, Rudy Reyes, on here for the first episode, the first episode of Veteran Etc., a show dedicated towards veteran readjustment culture, a concept I developed in uh, my studies and in my uh, uh, in uniform, out of uniform experiences going back to the 90s um, with veterans of, of all modern wars and as well as veterans in garrison. And so I'm here with Rudy Reyes, who um, actually helped uh, me develop uh, my concept. But not only that, um, he actually... Uh, why I, I feel it's important for him to be on this show on the first episode. Well, he, as a guest, because he helped me start and pioneer a veteran wellness podcast back in 2016. He was doing that before in interviews, but was so busy in film and in other projects. You know, I just kind of like saw it and he gave an opportunity for me to get into it that get into it with warfighter radio network and out of it 70 50 to 70 shows were produced and and uh uh, uh rudy generously um was part of the first 20 10 to 20 of them indirectly yeah. to to help enhance um the audience so your your work uh rudy i want um the 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 the, the folks here and and i know i know you've got you've got several meetings coming up important meetings um I just want the folks, the, the audience to know a little bit about you and also how you see yourself connected to the veteran community, because then I'm going to give a, a certain interpretation. Absolutely. Uh, Mike Kim, we call you Mike Shaul Kim, like Shaolin, Shaul Kim, the warrior monks. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about, uh, I'll tell the audience here a little bit about you, brother. Uh, studying theology, fighting for his country, preaching to people, specifically people that uh, on the surface um, would be turned away or looked at in a, in a less than fashion. That was your mission is to bring these people to the word. Um, myself, when I was struggling deeply, uh, Mike Kim not only invited me into the Yale club, which is some of the finest times I've had because all of us warrior veteran brothers would get together, sometimes tore up. Sometimes I didn't even know how I got there, but you know, I knew I wanted to look sharp. We had to wear pants, big deal for me. I don't do yeah. that very often. And I had to wear sleeves. We, we, and, and you know, and you, we were able, you were able to get that, that forgiveness to, to drive on. Yeah. They, they just let the Rudy, yeah. they just gave I the Rudy I, w- I wore co- corduroys. Yeah, yes. the corduroys couldn't be called jeans, but they weren't trousers. And <laughs> uh, it, it, I mean, just this incredible family we created there, the New York contingency, um, yes. recon Marines and snipers and, and warriors. Uh, and, um, and Mike, you were there for me, brother, when I was struggling. You did not, you did not admonish me. Instead, you just stood beside me. And did you notice because of that love and support and our, our, our brilliant discourse, I eventually leveled out myself. I took the reflections from the brothers and sisters who truly love me. And I found that I had value. And that's why maybe this veteran community is so, so special and why they struggle so bad or why they struggle in such a deep way when we fight together and we accomplish these uh, intense uh, um, missions and and we we go through these operations that require so much of one another and as a collective in a collective way that most people cannot even comprehend um, because we will live in each other's urine and uh, and we will crawl on our bellies and hide in holes and then and then uh, and engage the enemy 
and 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 not sleep for weeks and and, and except a, the last piece of pound cake i will share with you uh, this intimacy and this powerful community and family that harkens back to our ancient times to primal times when we leave service we go to our different perspective areas in which we came from and this intimate warrior family is now broken up and we see i'm just putting this together right now look what uh, the studies out now how traumatic divorce is for children mm -hmm. and multiply that a thousandfold when the unit disbands mm -hmm. so our work now uh, Mike, myself, uh, you know, with with veteran, et cetera, with Force Blue, with yes. with uh, with our communities um, that focus on uh, veterans' potential, not veterans' problems. We yes. need to be together. Let and me by let coming me, back. Yeah, go ahead. Let me take, let me interrupt it. you on that because the Force Blue, and I don't I don't want to toot my own horn here, but um, the largest uh, uh, viewership for lectures at University of North Texas was my lecture that I gave back in April for That's the whole right. academic year. But I mentioned, um, I think part of it, I, I went off script and part of it was to mention folks like you at Force Blue and the things that you've done, like you said, uh, possibilities versus problems, potential yeah. over problems as far as the veteran community. Can you tell me a little bit about um, uh, vet, vet Blue and what, what, what sure. uh, how it's touched your life and, and just, just the work? Well, you remember, Mike, we were both struggling at one time yes, to see our yeah. sons. Yep. Uh, I was struggling. On one. Yeah, yeah, I was. And, and, and you saved me as well. Uh, I struggle. I was struggling deeply, too, um, coming out of a really hard drug habit, uh, which which uh, the reason why I started medicating myself is because I was just in so much pain mentally and right. emotionally. But let me stop you here because two important things tied to this show that narrative but also what you did recently with uh the british media i think you were oh, the yeah. first veteran that that actually became so transparent about uh, about, yes. about about these dark issues yes. and you just shared something regarding something that, that i've had problems with and that is to talk about uh veteran suicide but you right. gave the perfect uh, response to the British media uh, regarding that. And so I just wanted to give people a little bit of a, a background so that people don't, so people realize, you know, uh, Rudy was a recon Marine, a, an elite contractor. So he was elite on, on both sides, but also he was a, a Marine sniper where warfare is very up close and personal. And, um, I don't think a lot of people understand that level of warfare. And when they want to talk about war, it's very limited. So that's why I wanted to bring the context into um, your part of your journey. Yes. It, it, well, this is what's so powerful and transformative for me as a young man. Uh, from my experience, a uh, the threshold of manhood can only be accomplished with these elements, um, fellow like-minded warrior brothers, uh, taking on a service-driven and purpose-driven uh, task in which you must face life and death. Um, and through this quickening in which some may die, that is the boon, the knowledge and the wisdom of manhood is reflecting back on childhood and reflecting on innocence and about how precious and, and fleeting it is and why children are so protect are so important and why we must protect our women and our families and our society because we know that the beauty and the innocence, the passion that's created by, by uh, childhood wonderment, the world has a way of absolutely uh, tearing that asunder and um, the world is a conquest, a qu conquest driven um, uh, environment. We and, see and it in nature. That, yes. yes, we, and, we and, see it in and, nature. We see it in societies. We see it in regimes. And, uh, and after we go through that, that quickening, we are changed. Now, there is a heavy price to pay for that quickening. And that is what we call the um, 
the, the fallout, the PTSD, the anxiety, the physical maladies as well. However, I'm letting all of our listeners um, hear this from me and really feel it from me. These things are temporary and it and they are natural. There is a way forward, there is a way through, and there's a way higher, and that's together, and that's through mental, physical, and spiritual health, and uh, and there is a way. I'm living proof. There's a way. And that and that brings me up to because you were talking about the nature's the nature the wonders of nature and childhood, and that was incredible. It, it got so po poetic to me, at, and at the same time, that's how I felt that in a way that connected you to this concept of force blue and, and yes. all of that. Yeah, yes. So force blue with the natural outgrowth. You've known me for a long time now, brother. And do you remember when we were, <laughs> when we were out on that, that veteran retreat with some wild ass folks? <laughs> and uh, I think I was still, I, I probably still just, you know, just finished an eight ball of cocaine. Uh, I had to, uh, I would drove, uh, I think uh, I, instead of water, I was drinking vodka. We finally get there and I said, you know what, Rudy, it's time to clean up. Let's go ahead and start working out. Let's run the grounds. Let's, let's work out. And, and, uh, and I said, but Manny Pacquiao's fighting tonight. So we got to get that fight. And we were in some remote, remote location. Yeah. Yeah. But we damn near had to call the cable company to drag the cable to make it happen. Anyway, we made it happen. You, you actually, you actually paid for it, which yeah. was very generous. And uh, then, then uh, you were giving a night. You were, you know, I knew, I knew you were, you weren't gonna, you weren't gonna, you weren't gonna gut me. But they didn't. The other yeah. people in the house. We were doing, we were not were doing knife defense. Yeah. We were doing knife yes. fighting it's tactics in yeah. the kitchen. Knife fighting yeah. tactics in the kitchen. And these veteran brothers and sisters were like, "What the <laughs> hell is going on?" Yeah. Well, we've been in, we've been in two decades of warfare. Warfare yeah. is very much at the front of our hearts and our minds, it is galvanized us into the men that we are. Mm -hmm. Instead of feeling upset and angry and fearful or rageful about what has happened, I say, empower yourself because it's also been not just glorious, it has been illuminating to the human experience. And we know the value of a cup of coffee. We know the value of having us something to eat. We know the value of a peaceful night's sleep because we've been without all of that. Yeah. We know the value of a brother or sister's embrace. We know the value of seeing your children. You know, we really do. And so, and that mother nature, we know the value in nature. Think about it out there in Afghanistan and Iraq, things just burn to the freaking ground and burning metal and plastic and, 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 and children just... Uh, with a bicycle in or two, rolling it, and that's the, mm. that's the closest thing to Toys R uh, Toys yeah. R Us they have. Yeah. Um, so it, it, I got myself together out there on our retreat about seven mm -hmm. eight years ago, and I run in the forests, run in the forest, doing mm -hmm. archery, getting myself back. And uh, and so when Force Blue, when I saw yeah. that the coral reefs were being endangered, and it not really, and it's not just from climate change; it's from human. Uh, resource exploitation. Most of our corals are dying from disease that is uh, in part caused by DDT runoffs from big sugar and big agriculture wow. into the brackish waters. The boats are moving them through. And now because of the cruise lines and the anchors and it being mixed through the water, it's killing coral. Um, there's, there's many factors, but they're factors we can do something about. And I said, all right, I need to do something about it. And I've never accomplished a mission on my own. So let me call Roger Sparks, the big frog, the legend, you know, recon daddy and, and pararescue. Let me call Jeff Reeves, SEAL commander. Let me call my people, um, you know, Will Hinks and recon, recon Marine. I brought yeah. a team together, uh, my freaking uh, special operations medic, Nate mm -hmm. uh, Quinn, and uh, once we got a team together, we didn't even know what we were doing, but we called in some scientists. We got in some volunteers. We started creating something. And that was the birthplace of Force Blue and Cayman Islands. Now we have scaled it to the level. We've got 50 plus teammates. We've got a veteran program that any one of our brothers and sisters out there can go to the VA and the folk rehab. You can take that money, get your advanced open water, 
after you have your advanced open water, you check in with Force Blue. You get your orders to Force Blue and you do on the job training. Not only are you rebuilding the planet, not only are you protecting the planet and leaving legacy for your children, your grandchildren, you are doing uh, the same service to yourself because you're going to find out you're not alone. You got other brothers and sisters that are going through it just like you and you're working out every day. You're doing rad, rad missions under the water and seeing those beautiful turtles and sharks and seeing the coral come back to life. That uh, the same blossom and bloom you see subsurface, you will find in your heart. The same blooming of life uh, that, that you're helping recreate there for the world, you're creating in your relationships with your family members and your loved ones. It's nothing short of miraculous. Forcebluteam.org, get involved. That's awesome. That's that's great. And and not only that, I'm glad you also briefed everyone about the the Voc Rehab. Another another pioneering thing that you did was create this organization and also for it to be uh, working with the VA in the educational goals of veterans. And, and um, that's just an incredible thing. I, I'm, I'm really psyched about that. Now I want to talk about, I'm, I'm being selfish outside I'll of the humanitarian. It, All right, I will, because I was so inspired um, because you've done, you know, you've written the book, um, you were, you know, you created your, your own uh, persona that was not scripted by Hollywood uh, as Rudy Reyes in Generation Kill in um, the cult classic. When I say cult classic with yeah. the military world like Apocalypse Now or the Deer Hunter, well, Steph, Generation X is a uh, Generation brother. Kill is for our generation. That yeah. is our generation. It's our generation's um, uh, full metal jacket. Yes, it's our yes. generation's. Um, platoon apocalypse now deer hunter magnificent yeah. i would like to do a deep dive and 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 a uh, honest and and um unapologetic exploration and do our generation's deer hunter and make it very intimate and i will do that yes. and i'm excited about doing that um and after now, getting into the media it opened up these doors yeah. but until i was it opened up doors and, and there were doors to hell and doors to heaven. Mm -hmm. And, um, but without a lantern, without a lantern, because in the entertainment business, I imagine because it's built on facades and it's got a lot of money. Um, no one gives you a lantern or a guide. I didn't have a squad leader or a team leader in the entertainment business. And so I, t I went into a lot of doors that were, were filled with hell, filled with fire, filled with um, betrayals and, and, uh, and, and lies. And uh, however, I chose to, bur to feel the burn and keep walking through it until I found a door out. Even in all of that, you were constantly getting um, uh, increases as far as exposure Yes, uh, you know, it, and I wanted to ask you, why do you think people, uh, they, they're, they're, you know, you were, you were just like, uh, you know, John Wynn Bay, you know, my kind of sea daddy yeah. you know, did, did entertainment back, back in um, prison golf four time and all that stuff. But you, it just seemed as though you, you did it and then. You took it, you and John took it to other levels, but the way you did it, um, you you made it kind of like um, a household name. Like when you did yeah, the brother, military well, and then Rudy Reyes. Well, you check know? this out, what's happening here. We're here in Baltimore mm -hmm. and I'm here to see my clinic and my doctor and get all my freaking IVs because I just did 30 days hard tabbing, hardcore in the Jordanian desert, uh, you know, by Israel and Saudi Arabia. Yes. very close to the equator and was uh, really, uh, really, really uh, attrited. And I'm leading recruits and it's a freaking mission of a lifetime, making impacts and changing lives through hard training. You know, I tell them it's cruel to be kind. So I was yeah. a hell of a taskmaster. And, and you them. became the, you became the team leader for this worldwide tv show sas yes it's the best team. ever in entertainment brother it's a human transformation show masquerading as a, a military selection okay. sas who dares wins yeah. and i've got billy billingham 33 years in british army 22 yes. sas command sergeant major at sas 
Uh-huh. Foxy, Jason Carl Fox. Brother, he's the Rudy, the English Rudy Reyes, the two sizes up. I mean, a stout, 230 pounds, 6'3", still runs fast. And he's Royal Marine Commando, swims, a bad man. And then from the Bronx, baby, from freaking yeah. the beasts from the East, yeah. we got Remy Adeleke, yeah. an immigrant from Nigeria, came uh, with nothing to this country. Uh, his father was killed in Nigeria, and he built himself up out of the Bronx, out of the hard streets, out of the drug game, made some of himself and became a United States Navy SEAL. That's our lineup. We are like the freaking Avengers of the special operations world. And it takes everything we got to run this freaking program. And um, so here I am rebuilding and, re, uh, and refitting because I'm prepping for, for um, I'm prepping for Vietnam next. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm pre- yeah, I've got Vietnam for another two seasons. I just finished up uh, SAS for Fox. So you all, you audience here will see it after the Super Bowl. You'll see our trailer at the Super Bowl on Amazing. Fox. And so, I saw uh, I, I saw the Force Blue folks always met oh, always yeah. understand. The Force Blue also gets on s- some Super Bowl coverage because I saw Yes, the they do Blue because there. we are we are the NFL's veteran nonprofit. Um this is what's so profound. I'm here and I meet uh, a dark green brother here. Um uh 23 years on the force, Baltimore, policeman, uh, undercover guy out of the Bronx, mm. Dominican. His name is Dre. And, uh, and he starts talking to me and he just finished as the military or the police advisor for We Own This City about Baltimore. Mm. All right. And he was just talking to the same producers personally that produced Generation Kill. Wow. And he says, yo, dog, that's you. You that mm-hmm. one. And I said, yeah, it's me. And he goes, man, I was just with Nina. I was just with David Simon. And I told him, I love this show we're doing, but the best show I've ever seen you all produce is Generation Kill. So that's amazing. It is still, and even more so now, yeah. part of our modern popular culture, no longer just Nietzsche, Military. warfighter, culture no longer just military culture no longer just veteran culture no longer just action culture i mean american culture and uh what an honor what a true honor brother yeah and and i think also it says a lot because it's a contribution in how i look at veteran um readjustment culture because in that movie while there's like um very uh how could i say controversial issues yeah no one's no one's afraid to really talk about that but also they were able to present the lives of 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 men who had grown up in a a, in a prosperous america doing this type of mission mass culture pop culture mission i mean uh uh reality prior to that mission and yet you guys still stood to that mission being you know the first uh element into into baghdad you know that's right brother that's right but not knowing not knowing what was going to happen oh so, remember we were fighting in gas masks and, and mob suits and when incoming uh would we be, be we would be engaged with incoming and we'd be taking hits we had to assume it was sarin gas or mustard gas and 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 we were so far ahead that there's no way we could get to the rear and to get cleaned and survive so we had our two pan chlorate and our, our adrenaline just to give us three hours to continue the fight and then die and then uh, die where we stood and we would not and, and we would be left until the war was over and someone would, would pick us up. Not a single one of us were living in fear. We understood fear as an element and it was compartmentalized where it needed to be so, we, uh, so that we were professional and sharp with our actions but no one was paralyzed. And, you know, fear will make you, it, there's, there's flight, there's, there's fight, and then there's freeze. Uh, no one froze. No one froze. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's incredible. And the other thing that I wanted to uh, point out to the audience is that uh, you're, you're even in a, um, which call, in case my son is listening, uh, uh, or viewing uh, oh, call, call of, of duty, duty. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Which, which call of duty are you in uh, it, it's called war zone i believe yeah now this is so wild like like yeah. you know what my advice yeah. to any 
burgeoning vetrepreneur out there, mm -hmm. any, any young man or woman or middle-aged man or woman that is ready to write a new chapter about their life, and they see the lives of, of Mike Cam, Rudy Reyes, they see um, um, my brother from Heroes and Horses, Micah, uh, uh, they, they think about uh, Tim Kolchak from Veterans Project, which is an amazing project. I'd love to have you on, him on here with you. Um, and they say, hey, I want to be more. I want to show more. I want to express more. Give your everything you got, give everything you got to your authentic self and authentic voice. There is nothing to be manufactured. If you stay in the wheel space that is truly you, the individual, and what makes your heart beat fast, it may take five years, it may take 10, 15, but the audience will come. The audience will come. Look, um, Mike, I've had how many ups and downs and sideways careers doing counter terror and counter poaching and modeling, um, doing movies, being in a freaking mental institution for a year, struggling homeless. I've been there, man. And I never stopped pursuing what I truly believed in. I didn't know if it would come to fruition. That was not my goal. My goal was to be my authentic self and find the truth and find the wisdom through that experience so that every day I can be a better version of myself than I was the day before. So that's my advice to everybody out there listening. That's, that's great. And um, yeah, so, so uh, what's, what's your, what's your uh, workout routine? Ah, it, it, oh, lately yeah, because yeah. i know i know i know i know yeah there is there, yeah there it brother is. you know there baby yeah, yeah. okay remember in scout sniper yeah i've, I've uh in scout sniper community we got mm -hmm. uh something very simple when it comes to marksmanship mm -hmm. consistency mm -hmm. is accuracy mm -hmm. consistency is accuracy you will hit the mark in your life in your fitness in your health by being consistent. You know yeah. about that, brother. Yeah, well, you, you know about you, that, you, brother. Well, when I forgot about it and you helped me lose uh, <laughs> the 30 pounds, you know, yeah, baby. Uh, you know, uh, I, I really appreciated that when you started really, you know, you never like, you know, you never pressured me, but I, I just kind of, I wasn't happy uh, yeah. with the body that I had. And then, uh, you know, just hanging out with you uh, really inspired me to just, keep in check, but more for That's my right. health, you know, That's for right. Mind. For your yeah. mind, your health, all of it. I mean, you know, we're now 50 mm -hmm. years old and, mm -hmm. um, but I want the next 50 better than the first 50. And, yep. um, well, I'm just so blessed to talk with you, brother. I've got to wrap Thank it up and prepare you, for this next evolution. Yep. And we'll be doing this again, brother. We'll all be right. doing Thank it again, brother. Much. Thank you. All right. You Take it. care. All, all right. right. I love you, brother. I much love. You too. All right. Thanks. Bye. 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 That was Rudy Reyes. And, um, I've got a couple minutes to um, reflect on different things. Um, so Rudy just uh, inspires a lot of people, but he doesn't do it um, out of his um, military acumen, his his uh, you know his daunting you know physical feats, um, his knowledge of you know martial arts like out of the Bruce Lee level. Um, there's an incredible humility uh, tied to Rudy Radius, and I think it's important to to recognize that, you know, uh, making a, a simple Google search and reading the numerous articles about Rudy or the different pieces that Rudy um, produced, I, I think there's a, a benefit in uh, checking out um, his material. If you haven't seen uh, Generation Kill, uh, I would say that was a, that's a very important movie to see when it comes to uh, military cinema. And it's not a movie that uh, glorifies war. Um, it's a movie that just presents the narrative of uh, those those warriors in in war and um, showing the different aspects, human aspects of war. I think that's what's missing in much of the headlines, much of what's happening now in Ukraine. Um, we get the spectacle of the human despair, but do we really truly understand the hows and the whys some of these uh, tragedies 
in the human condition have unfolded. I think uh, it's important to look at veteran readjustment culture from that lens in the way that the things that we produce, the art, the, you know, like Maria Salazar and, and uh, Claymore Vets, you know, the incredible art that she's involved with um, and getting veterans involved in art. Um, these are noble things tied to the veteran community. And I think that's an example of how um, veterans can express themselves and create their own meaning and also lead others to create their meaning. I know Rudy Reyes in my life and the life of, lives of other veterans has been able to do that. And uh, much like the artist um, Maria Salazar, Rudy within the readjustment world also provides um, his presence in a very artistic, poetic way that has helped the lives of many veterans. And um, it's one of those things where whether it's Rudy Reyes or another veteran that, that may uh, touch your life, um, in the big screen or, or, you know, within your VFW post. I mean, these are people that have helped you along the way, have helped you um, create meaning in your veteran life. And we all need that. And we all find that. We find it in books. Uh, last week, I mentioned um, the man in the gray flannel suit. A book and a movie, uh, Gregory Peck was in the movie, a 1956 movie. Uh, Sloan Wilson wrote the book in uh, 1955. And as I mentioned it before, and in the future, I'm going to do a book review on, on this book. Um, the ironies of war and, and readjusting from war are pointed out by this book, by Sloan uh, by Sloan uh, Wilson. Uh, another book that stands out um, is uh, Born on the Fourth of July by Ronnie Kovic, um, Vietnam veteran who experienced, um, you know, uh, terrible things uh, from war, but was also able to share what that journey was. So how was it, you know, uh, being part of the Bronx VA to receive treatment as, you know, as a paralyzed, uh, wounded war veteran. Uh, how was it like to be part of an accidental uh, fratricide, right? I mean, we ended up having that later in, um, uh, as far as brought up in mass media with the issue of Pat Tillman. And what are the different ways we look at these different things, right? How, you know, um, for example, you hear a lot of Ronnie Kovic issue, issues tied to the Vietnam War and, um, and um, how Oliver Stone was able and born on the 4th of July kind of truly pre present the darkness and the guilt tied to uh, being part of fratricide. When I say fat, fratricide, um, that's the the the, uh, the the killing of of your your own men, and uh, sometimes that's done uh, accidentally, as it was done uh, in 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 war um, with Ronnie Kovac in Vietnam, and as well as uh, uh, what I believe uh, what happened in uh, in Afghanistan with Pat Tillman. Uh, war story is a uh, is a book that was recently written uh, about the Pat Tillman uh, uh, affair and a, a ranger who lives with the pain of what happened there. And um, it's, it's important to see that our lives are not as easy as we'd like them, we'd like folks to 
think it is, you know? I mean, how can I say it? We have these different myths, these beliefs, and yet, you know, War Story, a, mo a memoir by Stephen Elliott, I mean, it's important for his story to be heard regarding the Pat Tillman uh, affair. And um, just like I had Rudy Reyes discuss uh, aspects of his life um, uh, on, on veteran, et cetera. Um, we're going to continue to have folks um, talk about this exchange um, that happens within um, the exchange of stories, narratives, you know, Rudy's story, um, how it fits with the, the larger narrative, you know, how it is a counter narrative in itself to the big narrative of war and veteran readjustment. And this is what veteran readjustment uh, culture is about. It's about looking at many different aspects of the exchanges of, of veteran narratives and those narratives, how they were propped up before the military, during the military, and after the military. And um, I invite you to view us every Sunday. You'll have access to all of our shows and um, check out our guests or my reflections. Uh, they alternate each week. Next week, you'll have a reflection um, from me. It will be an audio piece, and I will talk a little bit on um, readjustment um, military literature. So basically, it won't be like masterpiece theater, but um, I'm going to mention like, you know, a deeper look into the man in the gray flannel suit, which it's a powerful book about veteran re readjustment. I can't say it enough, but um, you know, if you've gotten, if you don't, if you haven't read it, read the book. If you haven't seen the movie, check out the movie. It'll definitely clue clue you in on what are the pressing issues after the military, and how are those loved ones affected by one's military service. I think that's something that, that uh, Fox News and uh, CNN uh, rarely talk about, but here on this show, veteran, et cetera, we're not afraid to talk about these uh, pressing issues in the veteran domain. And I'd like to thank the folks at cominghomewell.com for more interesting uh, shows tied to the veteran readjustment uh, process, check them out. But I say, check, check me out every week. I'm available and um, can't wait until next Sunday. Veteran Etc. invites you to join us again with your host, Mike Kim, every Sunday. If the content from this podcast is informative to you, please share the podcast with others. Give a like and or post something you learned from the episode on social media. If interested in other truly informative podcasts like Veteran Etc., check out cominghomewell.com for a listing of other veteran-based podcasts. Thank you for tuning in.